In this video, we're going to take a look at the different bookkeeping reports available to us here in FreshBooks. Now I'd like to let you know beforehand that since the last video I've gone in and I've added some new invoices to our FreshBooks account so we have some data to work with. So if you take a look at my invoices and expenses section down here on my FreshBooks home screen, you'll notice that for March and April and May we have some paid invoices as well as some unpaid invoices here in May. And you can also notice the expenses associated for each of those months that we imported earlier in this video series. So to take a look at the bookkeeping reports here in FreshBooks, we need to navigate to the reports section up here at the top right. Once we arrive at the reports section, you'll notice that there are some different categories for reports here in FreshBooks. In this video, we're going to talk about the bookkeeping reports. However, in future videos, we're going to talk about invoice and timesheet reports. So underneath the bookkeeping reports, you'll notice that the first one, the profit and loss report, to me that is the most valuable report available to a small business owner here in FreshBooks because at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line, how much money you're taking in versus how much you're spending. And that's what the profit and loss report can show you. So let's go ahead and let's take a quick look. When you access any report here in FreshBooks, you'll notice that at the top of the report, there's this area where you can filter the type of results that you'd like to see in the report. So by default, the period we're going to be looking at is quarterly ending in May, which doesn't really make sense because the quarter doesn't end in May. So I tend to change this to yearly a lot of the time. And then we can choose when we want the report to end, obviously. Revenue. From an accounting standpoint, you're always going to want to look at cash-based revenue, how much money you've already received, not how much you've invoiced. However, sometimes when you're doing strategic planning for your business, it might be important to take a look at the accrual-based accounting, which is how much you've invoiced for even if you haven't received it yet. So for now, let's take a look at the collected cash-based accounting. And then you can choose whether or not you want to include or exclude sales tax. So once you have these fields set up here at the top, go ahead and click Update. And you'll notice the report below is now updated to show all of 2013. So at the top of the report, I can see my income for each month. I can see 9000 for March, 5250 for April, and $1,395 for May. At the end of this report, all the way to the right, we can see the total that we've made in terms of sales for this year. If you have some expenses that fall under the cost of goods sold category, usually that is inventory or things that go into the making of a product, that would be listed here. And then all of your other business expenses are listed below. And you'll notice that they're listed by category, which is really useful because obviously we can see how much rent we paid per month in January and February. Same with electricity and supplies. However, if we want to look and see how much rent we've paid all year, we can take a look way over at the right here and see our total amount of rent paid. Down at the bottom, you'll see your total expenses, and then you've got your net profit, which is your gross profit minus your expenses. So this profit and loss report is really, really important to running your business. Not only can you see how much net profit we've made in the entire year, but we can look at it on a monthly basis. And you can see that we pretty much took a bath here in January and February. We lost $1,300 because we didn't have any income. But then we kind of made up for it here in March and April. So this definitely gives you a great overview of the financial health of your business. And that is the profit and loss report. Now let's go ahead and let's navigate back to the reports section and take a look at another one. This time I'm going to look at the balance sheet. There isn't too much we can do with this right now, but I think it's important to note that it's available because if you have an accountant that isn't used to using FreshBooks, they might have their own system that they usually create balance sheets from, and you can actually do it right here in FreshBooks. So if we click on this, we're not going to fill this whole thing out, uh, but you'll notice that FreshBooks does allow us to create a balance sheet. And really, we have to do a lot of the work ourselves because FreshBooks is not a full accounting system. So all FreshBooks knows is how much money you've received. Um, so you can see our accounts receivable is down here, uh, and th that goes under an asset. So then we have to go ahead and enter all of the other information in here. So if you have an accountant that does your taxes at the end of the year, uh, you can go ahead and you can show them that they can use this system, this wizard here in FreshBooks to create a balance sheet. And if this is something that you do yourself, you'll be glad to know that you can easily go in and you can enter your inventory and equipment and all of those numbers that you have either on hand or in another system. And you could create a full balance sheet here in FreshBooks. 
So now let's go back and take a look at some of the other reports available to us. The tax summary report. So if you are charging taxes, well, you're not charging taxes, but if taxes need to be charged on some of your products or services, you can see a report of how much you've collected here for the year. So that would definitely depend on what type of business you have. We don't have any for this particular business. You can see the accounts aging report. This is important if you've got a lot of clients that tend to be late on payments. You can go ahead and take a look in here and you can see all of the clients that have unpaid invoices and how long those invoices have been out there. So you can see, for this example, we have one company that has an outstanding invoice and it's less than 30 days old. So that's probably not the company that we're going to get on the phone and really beg them for the invoice or, or send it to collections. However, if you had one over here in this 90 plus day category, that's when invoices and debts tend to get sent to debt collectors. So those are definitely the companies that you want to get on their case about paying you and you might not want to expect that payment for a while if they haven't paid in over 90 days. So this is really important to see the companies that owe you money. So if we go back to this reports section, we're going to go ahead and look at the next one, which is just an expense report. So we saw an overview of our expenses earlier where we could see all of our expenses based on category. So if we had 10 supplies expenses for one month in this profit and loss report, they're just listed as one item, and that's supplies. In this expense report, we can see all of the individual expenses we have. So you can see here... We can obviously specify information about this report like we did in the profit and loss report. I'm going to leave it as is for now. And we can see all of our expenses that are first listed by their category, and then we can see the individual expense. So this is a great way to get a more detailed view at your expenses. Obviously electricity and rent are going to be things that you expect and you might even know off the top of your head, but where it really becomes useful is this supplies section because you might be spending a lot of money on supplies and you don't realize it over the course of a quarter or even a year but if you take a look at this expense report you can really drill down and see how much money you're actually spending on certain supplies and that sort of thing so this is definitely a good one to take a look at you'll notice up here at the top you have the option to group by category but you can also view by vendor so I could see specifically how much money I've spent this year at Staples or Office Depot um, you could also group it by project, author, or client. So you can really get a granular view of all of your business's expenditures for the year. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the last report available to us here in FreshBooks under the bookkeeping category, and that is the payments collected. Obviously, you want this report to be as big as possible. So this is basically, you can see companies that have paid your invoices, it's a little bit different looking at the profit and loss report because we can see actual line items of the invoice number, who the company was, and then their method of payment. So this is just a useful way to take a look at all the money you've received. You can see right now we're only looking at a certain date range. So if I change this and I make this all of 2013 so far and I update it, we'll see a more detailed report with a few more companies. And now what I could do is I could go up here to the clients drop down and I could say, I only want to see the money I received from company ABC. And we can choose that and update our report. And that way we can see specifically how much money we're making from each client over whatever date range we'd like to specify. So I think that these bookkeeping reports here in FreshBooks are super, super valuable, especially the profit and loss report. If you're one of those business owners that has trouble finding the time to look at all the granular details of the finances of your business and that sort of thing, if you're going to look at any of these reports, the profit and loss one is the best one to get a very good financial overview and just see the overall financial health of your business.